Boxing Hall of Famer, one day perhaps a Promoter Hall of Famer as well, the head man, the golden boy himself, the one and only Oscar De La Hoya joining us now. Hello, Oscar. How are you? What's up, brother? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing really well. Oh, there he is. Okay. Hey, Oscar, it's good to have you on the show. Thank you for doing this very busy time in your life. So I appreciate uh, you coming on. We had the press conference yesterday, Ryan Garcia and Javier Fortuna. That's uh, July 16th in... Yep. Uh, in Los Angeles. Can I ask you, Oscar, you know, we primarily talk about MMA here on the program, but I have to say, I feel like boxing is on fire right now. I actually feel like boxing is a little more interesting than MMA. Big fights are being made. There feels to be like this movement to try to make the fights that we weren't getting in the past. You know, Crawford, Spencer, Tank, and, and, and Ryan, hopefully in the future. Do you feel that as well? And if so, why do you think that is? Yeah, I, I, I feel it as well. And um, I've, I've been beating the drum for years now. Um, you know, telling promoters, you know, because we obviously know that boxing is such a, a fragmented sport. Um, I, I've been beating the drum, telling promoters, let's all work together, whether we cross the street or, or we meet halfway, whatever it might be, let's just get fights done. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, I, take, I take a page out of, uh, out of my good friend, uh, Bob Arum, Bob Arum's book. Um, you know, and, uh, when, when he once told me, uh, 20 years ago when I started promoting, um, you know, work with everybody, work with everybody, make the big fights happen and boxing will, will continue to, 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 to thrive. So, um, that's exactly what we're seeing, you know, um, you know, to make these big fights happen, a lot of promoters and managers have to let their egos down and, and listen to the fighters right. for once. I think that's, that's, that's key here. So. Um, it's like Ryan Garcia, who's fighting Fortuna um, at the Crypto Center um, uh, July 16th, uh, but he wants Tank. And so I, I, yesterday I made, a, a, um, I, I made a, an announcement uh, telling Tank himself, if he's a free agent or even if he's not, uh, I, I would love to work with, with Mayweather and his promotional company and make this fight happen with, with Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia. I'm ready to make them a multi, multi, multi million dollar offer. Um, and, and we can, we can stage it on both platforms, the zone and showtime. And it's a win-win for everybody. Yes. Now, do you feel like this happens? Do you feel ultimately if, if Ryan gets by Fortuna, that has to happen probably first. Uh, do you think that it happens yeah. this year? I, I, I hope so. I mean, I'm, I'm gunning for November. Um, Ryan Garcia, if he gets past Fortuna, which I believe he will. I, I, I believe uh, I believe Ryan has too much firepower for Fortuna. He might stop him in the sixth, seventh round. Um, so if that happens, then we uh, we hopefully can focus on on November and and try and get this fight done. Um, I would I would think it's almost impossible um, because because um, there's there's a certain person who uh, who uh, works against everyone in the industry and 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 you know the 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 manager on paper Al Heyman who controls everybody uh, on Showtime and all the fighters there um, you know just doesn't want to make these big fights happen it's 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 incredible it's I just do not understand it um, but I'm gonna keep pushing because look I was once a fighter. So I understand that these fighters want these big fights mm. and, and, and I know what it takes to get them done as a promoter. So um, I'm just listening to the fans here. I'm trying to push as hard as I can. It's not our fault. It's not in the fighters fault. It's, it's a certain person that just doesn't want to make these big fights happen. Are there any promoters that you would be unwilling to work with? No, I work with everybody. I've, I've worked with, I've worked with, um, with Bob Arum. I've worked with Donkey in the past. Uh, right. um, um, I've worked with every single promoter out there in the world and I have no problem whatsoever. I have no ego whatsoever. Um, I just want to make these big fights happen. And, um, you know, that certain person, Al Heyman, who basically controls everything, all the fighters out there at PBC. Um, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's a tough position to be in, but, you know, as long as we keep on beating that drum, hopefully, uh, hopefully he'll crack. How do you feel about the current state of Golden Boy? Are you happy with where the company is at? I'm, I'm extremely happy um, uh, where it's at. Obviously, we were, uh, when I started Golden Boy Promotions, um, I, I built it and uh, we had every single fighter uh, in the world. The best fighters today that are, that are fighting today uh, were all my fighters. And, and that certain person I'm talking about, Al Hain. 
Um, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's a very, very interesting character in the sport of boxing. Um, but, uh, look, every, every single fighter I had, like, uh, Deontay Wilder and, and Crawford, uh, um, um, you know, fighters like Spence, um, all those guys, uh, um, you know, they're, they're all world champions now. And so what we're doing now is rebuilding our stable, mm. um, um, like the Virgil Ortiz's of the world, uh, uh, like Surdo and Jaime Munguia, Ryan Garcia, uh, Jojo Diaz. So little by little, this is what we do best mm -hmm. is, is build the very best fighters out there. So, um, we're, we're on the, uh, we're on the cusp of, 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 uh, of, of building, uh, world champions. So they're one fight away. Ryan Garcia is one fight away. Jaime Munguia is a fight away. Um, uh, Seward was one fight away from fighting uh, Bivol, who just beat Canelo. Right. Uh, he's next in line. So uh, it, it's exciting times for us at Golden Boy. But I mean, this is this is what exactly what we do. Are you looking to sell the company? Um, I'm eventually. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm actually getting fed up and tired. Uh, it's uh, why. Look at all these great hairs, man. <laughs> I mean, Jesus. Um, no, but look. I, I, if, if, if the right opportunity presents itself uh, to merge, to, uh, to partner up, um, I'll never sell my company. I, 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 I love Golden Boy. I love what I do. Uh, the sport of boxing gave me everything um, inside and outside the ring, what I have, um, what I represent. Um, you know, boxing is my love. And, uh, you know, the, the fight game is my love. So I, I, I might, <laughs> might partner up, but uh, I'll never sell. Ultimately, what went wrong with Canelo? Um, it's, 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 it's a long, long, long story. Um, you know, there were, there were certain powerhouses and players who were, who were against us, uh, at, at Golden Boy. I mean, we've had, we've had many, many enemies, man. I've been, I've been fighting, I've been, I've been fighting, uh, uh, people left and right. Um, you know, it's, it's promoting is a tough business and, and when, it, when they want to take you down, um, it's, uh, um, um, it's, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough business to be in. Um, and, uh, but look, we survived it. We had to, we had to sign the contracts and let them go. Um, but I, I really can't get into details of what exactly happened, but, um, you know, it was, it was a very unfortunate situation for us. If you were promoting him still, would you have booked that fight against Dimitri Bivol? Uh, no, never, Why? never. Why not? Because it was it, it, it was a it was a, a, a lose lose situation for everybody. nobody knew Bivol whatsoever. I would have promoted Bivol to to get a bigger name because nobody knew who he was before he fought Canelo. I mean, he was he was irrelevant. He was nobody. We were actually going to face him against uh, uh, Surdo Ramirez uh, Bivol, uh, but um, look, uh, Canelo has a, a promoter now that um, obviously doesn't come from the boxing world. He doesn't really know the fight game. Um, and, uh, and he got Canelo beat. It was the wrong style. It was, um, I mean, Las Vegas was, uh, had no buzz whatsoever. Uh, I was there actually sitting ringside, uh, supporting Canelo, but you know, it's, it's Canelo is, is the superstar of the, of the game right now. Um, it, you know, he, Eddie Hearn didn't do no justice to Canelo, um, when he faced him against people. Uh, so do you have a relationship with Canelo now? And if so, how would you describe it? Like, where are you guys at? No, there's no, I haven't talked to him. Um, but you were there. I'm, I'm open. You were there to support him. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I've, 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 I went to his, uh, the, the uh, Callum Plant fight. Uh, I've been, I think I've been to three of his fights. I just, I love the game. I love, I love boxing. I love, I love fights. Um, you know, um, and uh, I'll, I'll support any fighter um, um, to, to the death. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's what I do. It's, it's, I love this game. I have so much passion for it. So, having to watch Canelo live, the biggest fighter uh, in boxing today, I mean, was, was a big honor for me. So it sounds like you're not a huge Eddie Hearn fan. Why not? No, I mean, look, it's, it's, he, he, he's, he's, he's building, he's, he's doing a lot of, a lot of fights that, that mean nothing, uh, especially here in the U S um, you know, um, and uh, you know, he, he might be a good promoter in the UK and he's building European fighters and, but, it, it means nothing here in the U S so, um, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, I know this is a, a business and, um, you know, he's, uh, he's partners with the zone and obviously now I'm partners with the zone, but, uh, you know, let's just 
let's just stay in our own lane and 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 do our jobs right and and let me focus on on the US market and build champions and uh and 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 boxing will will keep on uh thriving for many years to come. He's uh you know, he's very outspoken, very brash. Uh the media seems yeah. to like him. I've liked him when he's come on my show. Uh, how do you sure. feel about his persona, the the persona that he puts out there? No, he's 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 a, he's a character. That's 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 all it is. I mean, um you know the business of boxing to build to build superstars to build champions um you know it, it takes it takes a lot of a lot of strategy um it takes a lot of insight um um uh, knowing the fighters knowing their styles um and that's one thing that i i'm i'm an expert at um you know when when i built canelo alvarez when he crossed the border from Mexico uh, at the tender age of uh, 18 years old and I promoted his first fight we we had a vision we 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 knew exactly what we had in our hands and uh and build him to be a a monster you know so uh, that's exactly what I I I intend to do um you know with Virgil Ortiz and Ryan Garcia uh, the next generation um you know and that's what other promoters don't know the, they, they, they don't know the secret of, of, of how to build a superstar. You know, I've, I've promoted Mayweather, I've promoted Pacquiao, I've promoted all the big superstars in the past. And there's a formula that you, that you need to have in order to build superstars. How do you make sure that Ryan at some point doesn't say, I don't need you anymore. I'm going to go out on my own. How do you, how do you keep that relationship strong? Um, contracts. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> all right. <laughs> bottom line right sure. i mean this 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 sport is i mean this sport is so it's so i mean it's it's heartbreaking you know um um you know fighters fighters tend to make a lot of money and when they lose or or if something if one thing is wrong then they blame the promoter they blame the promoter for everything so it, it it shows your true colors. It shows it shows exactly what the fighter is all about. And so you know, one thing about about me that that I learned again from Bob Arum is: look, don't take this personal. Just treat it as a business. Uh, so you were supposed to come out of retirement in September and fight a guy we know very well here, Vitor Belfort. Unfortunately, you got COVID and the fight was canceled. Yeah. He ended up fighting Evander Holyfield in a fight that made us all a little uncomfortable, to be honest. How bad was it? Because I remember your video in the hospital. How bad was your, yeah. your battle with COVID? It was actually bad. Um, it was really, really bad. Uh, it was very unfortunate because I, I was actually in great shape. Yeah, yeah. I was in great shape, but, but I have to admit, I was lying to myself. When I was sparring, I was getting hit a lot. Okay. Um, yeah, so it was kind of like, I was being stubborn. I was in great shape. I, my reflexes, I mean, videos that I posted, I mean, they were, they were legit. They were fast. They were, I felt my reflexes were incredible, but when I was sparring, I was getting hit too much. And, um, you know, everything happens for a reason. I'm glad I didn't fight, uh, um, uh, because I mean, obviously, you know, he's, he's a big guy and, and I mean, he knocked out, uh, Evander Holyfield, um, you know, so everything happens for a reason. So, um, you know, I'm glad that I got over it. I, I didn't fight and now I can just, uh, you know, sit back and relax and, uh, and grow some gray hairs promoting fighters. Any chance you come back? Any chance you actually do this? No, no, no. It's I'm, done. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Look, like I said, like I said, everything happens for a reason and I'm actually glad I didn't come back. Um, I think, I think my ego got a little bit, you know, uh, uh, of me uh, as a fighter, you know, cause I've, I've always liked, you know, being in the ring to me is, is, is my safe zone, you know, boxing, the, the, the ring is like, it, it's everything to me. Like nobody can touch me in there. Like I feel safe. And so the fact that I wanted to get in the ring and train and, and, and feel that adrenaline, um, you know, it just, it, it, it kind of like took over me hmm. mentally. And, and I, and I believed myself, I, I believed that I can really do this. And, and, and that's, that's obviously the, uh, the, the, the nemesis of a, of a fighter, you know, when you, when your mind tells you, yes, you can do it, but your body is just not responding. You right. know, it's, it's uh it's a love, hate relationship I have with boxing, but, um, look, everything happens for a reason. I got COVID really bad. Uh, I'm glad I survived it. Um, um, and yeah, here we are. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to come back, uh, uh, anytime soon. That's but for sure. Why, the, why did you do that with Triller and not with your own promotion? Was that just because they offered you a ton of money? Like, I was just curious why you wouldn't do that under the Golden Boy banner. 
Um, it, it, yeah. At the time when, when they promoted, um, when they promoted Mike Tyson. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looked great. I actually, I actually bought the fight and it was great. It yeah. was a great production. And so I was, I was actually pretty amped up about it. Uh, you know, uh, having to work with somebody else and uh, with, with, with Ryan Kavanaugh, um, at Triller. And so it, it just looked awesome. It, it was a huge production and, and, and they painted a beautiful picture. And, and so the deal was amazing. Um, and like I said, I mean, everything, everything just happened for a reason. It didn't take place, uh, unfortunately, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad I didn't, I, I didn't fight, uh, uh, this monster uh, of a fighter, uh, because, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's a big guy. He's a, he knows what he's doing. He's talented. He, uh, you know, as, as old as we were, we still can throw punches. Right, so, right. you know, yeah, we saw it with Evander Holyfield, um, you know, where he knocked him out. So I was, I was, uh, I think I dodged a bullet there. By the way, I haven't talked to you in a few years. Uh, last time I believe I spoke to you is when you were launching Golden Boy MMA. Um, could I ask what, what happened there? Why did you just do one show? Um, you know, I, I did that one show. It was, it was, um, it was, uh, such a, such a great experience. Um, obviously it's not my sport that, that, that I, that I know that I, that I'm knowledgeable about. Um, um, it's still the fight game. It's still, it's still the same promotion. It's still, you know, you have fighters, you have the venues, you have the, the pay-per-views you have, it's, it's all the same. The business model is all the same. I mean, we had the, the arena packed, jam packed, um, pay-per-views didn't do too well, uh, for certain reasons, certain cable operators weren't really working with us. Um, um, but I think it's just because I, I, I received too much heat from, from Dana White. I mean, that's, that's literally the bottom line. Um, you know, uh, and also being busy with, with golden boy promotions. Um, I decided, Hey, I'm going to stay in my own lane. Um, um, but, uh, but I, I, I did it because, because, you know, the fighters came to me and said, Hey, why don't, why don't you help us out here? And, uh, you know, we want to, we want to try something new here. We want to, we want to, you know, try to build something here with you. And so, uh, I tried it. Uh, it was a great experience. I actually really loved it. Uh, um, uh, that, that atmosphere and the fans and it's there, it's really engaging. And so it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, but look, I mean, the bottom line is I, I received a lot of heat, um, for not really knowing, uh, the insights of, of MMA and, 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 you know, uh, everything that goes on, all the players and everything, the fighters. And so, you know, Dana, you know, criticized me and all that. And, and I, it, it's, it's for, for a good reason. I mean, you know, it's for a good reason. I, I, you know, there were some exchanges going back and forth, me and Dana, which I apologized to him. Uh, a, a thousand percent. I mean, I think, um, I think that there's still a lot of business to be done, uh, between me and Dana, um, um, in, in the future. Um, you know, I, I know that he was trying to, to, uh, cross over here to boxing. Um, I, I don't think it's been successful. I don't think he's really pushed it, um, um, that much, but, uh, if he ever wants to talk and sit down and, uh, I mean, imagine, imagine merging, our two powerhouses together and creating something together. I mean, it would be, it would be pretty unique. Wow. So this is uh, I mean, this is quite the left turn here. So what you're saying is you, you'd like to essentially extend an olive branch to Dana yeah, absolutely. and work with him potentially in the future. Absolutely. absolutely. I would love to work with him. Um, I'm actually, I'm actually building a house in Las Vegas. Um, 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 and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna move there full time, um, you know, to focus more on my on my business, on other businesses I have as well. But um, yeah, it would be it would be uh, it would be a lot of fun, interesting to uh, to build something together, um, you know, because look, boxing is a very fragmented sport, and what the what the uh, what the Fertitta brothers did and and Dana did with with uh, with the UFC is 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 incredible. Uh, you know, uh, buying the company um, um, uh, many years ago, uh, building it, um, building it into a powerhouse, building it into a league, building it into into what it is now is 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 just uh, so admirable. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I I'm I'm uh, I'm extending an olive branch, and uh, I would love to sit down and talk and uh, you know smooth things out. Uh, um, you know, let bygones be bygones and, uh, and then focus on business. Have you reached out to him privately to say this, or at least to try to set something up? To no, meet? no, I haven't. I, I haven't actually. Um, maybe you should. I haven't. Actually. 
Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I, I would, I would love to, um, I would love to sit down with him and, and just, uh, you know, just, just, you know, talk it over and then see what we can come up with. Maybe there's a, a, a formula that we can, we can both work together and, and, and do something really special. No hard feelings. I mean, he, he has said some things about you. I don't need to repeat them. No hard feelings. Yeah, yeah. No, no hard feelings. I mean, look, it is what it is. I mean, you know, it's, it's everything, everything. I, I said a couple of things that were, that were not nice. Um, you know, he said a couple of things that were pretty, pretty, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, below the belt, let's just say, um, you know, but no, no hard feelings whatsoever. I mean, it's, it's, it is what it is. Um, you know, we can, we can move on as adults and, uh, and, uh, and then figure out something if he wants to, um, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Uh, I'm all ears. Um, I'm more than happy and willing to, uh, to, to listen, to, to, to create something very special. Cause I, you look, I, I, I'm a businessman and I, I love to build, I love to build on something that, that, you know, a foundation, um, that, that can be, that can be, uh, uh, that can be very, very special. And, 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 and me and Dana coming together can be very special. Uh, just a couple more things and then I'll let you go. Thank you for the time. I appreciate it. By the way, why'd you take the, yeah, no the comments off your, your Twitter? You like to call people casuals and say, oh, they can't <laughs> respond. What's going on over there? What's happening? I, was, I put them back actually. Oh, you did? Okay. I was, I was actually just having fun. Okay. Uh, that's it. That's well, you get a lot of hate on Twitter? Oh my God. It's, it's always, it's always, you know, you get, you get these knuckleheads who always, yeah. you know, talk shit, you know, but it's all good. I mean, it's, I, I was just having fun, you know, it's, um, I, I'm, 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 I'm a kid at heart, uh, you know, first and foremost. Um, but yeah, I was just having fun. That's okay. It. Uh, I said on my show on Monday, Ryan Garcia, uh -huh. Tank Davis, given their ages, given their records, given their fan bases, I believe I said this on the record. Oh. I think it gets a million pay-per-view buys. Uh, the guy I was talking to, my 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 co-host, New York Rick, said I'm crazy. What do you think? Am I crazy? Is that too high? No, no. I think I think it does closer to 1.5. Wow. Um, really? Yeah, absolutely. Um, look, um, I I think given given the fact that uh, if this fight does get made, uh, Showtime has their their marketing uh, uh, machine, and and the Zone has been doing extremely well with Canelo. Um, you know, uh, uh, with, with, with Mayweather on, on tank side and, uh, and me on, uh, with Ryan, uh, on Ryan's side, I mean, this, this promotion oh can, can be, be, uh, can be pretty special. Um, I, I can already see us, uh, on two separate jets, uh, going all over the country, promoting this fight. It'll be, it'll be, uh, it'll be massive. But are you a fan of open scoring? I've been talking about open scoring. I'd like to see open scoring in MMA. How do you feel? I've asked a bunch of people about this. I, I think the fighters deserve to know where they stand. Maybe not every round, maybe three rounds, you know, three, six, nine, maybe five, ten. I don't know. But I like the sure. idea of open scoring. How do you feel about it? Yeah, no, we've actually tried it. Um, I, I believe the WBC tried it um, yeah. in some some fights. Um, you like it, it or don't like it? I, I'm, I am a fan of it, but then I'm not because... The, the the fan the fan inside the arena um didn't like it you know okay they just didn't like it. yeah they started booing and it just it wasn't it wasn't i don't know it wasn't fun for them the experience wasn't fun for them but i think i think yeah i mean if 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 if, if let's say let's say a fighter's down by one point and it's the last round i mean you're gonna get a one hell of a fight right in that last round you know so um and and it's obviously gonna be very transparent um, or, or you can point out judges who uh, maybe uh, were confused uh, at times uh, scoring certain rounds. Um, um, but I, I'm a fan, yes, but no. Um, but there obviously has to be something done uh, uh, in the near future to uh, to correct this big problem that we have in, in the combat sport right. um, area. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask recently, uh, a former employee accused you of sexual assault. Where, what could you tell us about where that stands? Yeah, the truth will come out. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, worried about it one bit. Um, anybody who knows me, anybody who over the period of the, my 49 years of existence, uh, you know, it's, it's all, it's all BS. Um, um, 
you know, the truth will come out. That's, that's the bottom line. I really can't discuss it and talk about it, anything, you know, okay. but um, the truth will always, always prevail. So I, I not worried whatsoever, not one bit, um, you know, the truth will, will always come out and prevail. Uh, appreciate your time. July 16th, Ryan Garcia returns. Can't wait for that. That's a massive deal, a massive fight. The zone, as you yeah. said, uh, crypto.com arena for maybe the casual fans before July 16th. <laughs> is there, is there a, uh, a date, a, a fight coming up on the Golden Boy calendar that we should look out for. Tell us something. Put your promoter hat on here for a second. And what's a fight that maybe we're not talking about that the MMA fans over here watching this show would be like, damn, I need to see that. Is there something that comes to mind? Yeah, so so I have I, I have, uh, I have uh, um, Jaime Munguia uh, fighting uh, this Saturday, actually at the Honda Center. Um, you know, it's, it's, we'll have we'll have like 12,000 people there. It's, it's going to be, he's fighting actually a, uh, I mean, I don't even know who in the hell he is, who he's fighting. Um, yeah, and but that's that's how I was I was trying to I was trying to make a Jaime Munguia versus Charlo yeah. fight, but the problem is Al Heyman uh. again he blocks it. So it's it's so I had to move on to the next contender. It was this kid Cali, who I really I'm a I'm the biggest fight fan ever, and I don't know who he is. Wow. Um, but uh, but uh, it should be a fun fight. It'll be obviously on the zone. Yeah. Um, and then we have uh, Virgil Ortiz uh, making his comeback. Um, he's already knocking on uh, on uh, Errol Spence's door. He's the number one contender. So uh, yeah, exciting fights coming up for us uh, at Golden Boy. Appreciate the time, Oscar. Good luck to you this weekend. Uh, good luck with the Virgil fight, the July 16th fight. And uh, hey, it would be right. nice you and Dana together, shaking hands, breaking bread, co-promoting. Yeah. Crazier things can happen. Live, live, live on your show. I Why appreciate not? that. Why that would be crazy. That would be the craziest <laughs> part of it all. Thank you so much, Oscar. All the best to you. You got it, brother. Thank you. There he is, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya.